Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and in tonight's episode of our Hanukkah special we are going to dye and then over dye some Capra DK yarn from Knit Picks. This yarn is 85% merino, 15% cashmere and it is so soft and one that I absolutely love to knit with but it's also one that I have yet to dye. So I am really excited to add a lot of oomph of color to this yarn tonight. We are gonna dye this yarn in two steps. First, we are going to do some low immersion dyeing with some primary colors to get something a little bright. And then we are going to, uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be quite a glaze, but we are then gonna put it into some black. And so what I am going for is a really dark color, um, something almost black, but we see hints of other colors underneath it. And it's going to be in the moment I am thinking of is the moment at the end, you have the lights off, you're watching the glow, the Hanukkah candles, and then the last one goes out. And so the room, it might not be pitch black. You might see a bit, but all of a sudden we go from the bright to the dark. Um, I actually love, sitting and watching the last candles um, burn out. So this is a moment that is, I guess, one of my favorite moments of the Hanukkah season. But let's see if I can achieve something that evokes that feeling in color. I pre-soaked the yarn in plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. Jacquard Sky Blue, Sun Yellow, and Fire Red are all listed as primaries. Um, and yeah, these are the colors that we are going to use for our base and they might you know mix with each other and we'll have all kinds of fun stuff i'm very near the end of my blue i will say that you know the yellow was never great in solution these are listed as one percent stock solutions they're not really one percent stock solutions they're my residual stock solutions that i made you know eight months ago all right so it's filled to about that line um, you see, that's my very scientific measurement. Um, <laughs> but let's measure out approximately the same amount of the other two colors, and then we will fill this up with water. I'm going to go ahead and fill these bottles the rest of the way up with some water, um, and then we'll get ready to start dyeing our yarn for the first step. In my steam pan, I have eight cups of water, and I am going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar. One. All right, that's a little more than two. I would say that's a total of two to three tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I am going to sort of just mix that up. And we're now gonna add our yarn and start heating things up. Um, as you'll see in the moment, for the first time, I have added some uh, reusable zip ties to the yarn. Um, so this way I hope that it'll make it easier for me to flip the yarn over, plus it functions as an extra tie. And so theoretically I should be able to reuse these over time. But I know that some people like shower curtains and whatnot, but I'm not laying them down sort of in an O. If anything, I'm having just one half sort of accessible at a time. So the, yeah, the circle is going this way versus that way, if it makes sense. Um, and so that way, hopefully this will create a more balanced type colorway. Um, even though we're in a fairly, fairly crowded pan. All right, I, when I removed these from the pre-soak, um, there were, uh, I did not squeeze out all of the water. So we've got reasonable depth of coverage right here. Um, you know, the it's very low immersion. If I press down though, you can see that there is plenty of water. And this isn't super wash, and everything's cool still, but I'm pressing down because I just want to make sure to give the vinegar a fighting chance to get to everything. But, all right, I'm now gonna turn on the two burners 
And once I start seeing some bubbles, then we'll start adding the dye. Okay, some bubbles and steam started pretty quickly, so I'm gonna start reducing the heat. And I'm also going to sort of do some shimmying, and I'm definitely, I'm gonna add more water. I'm getting a little nervous. I do not wanna burn the yarn. I have never burned yarn before. Um, and yeah, I just don't want it to crisp. And here's four more cups of water um, here in the pan and see, yeah, um, this is not quite as low immersion. There's still a lot of resist, um, physical resist, but um, I would say that there is better, I'm happier with the coverage. Like before, when I tried like shifting the pan, I felt like, I didn't feel like there was a lot of water because um, I felt like the yarn had just, soaked up all the water like a sponge, which is totally fine, but um, I, want it, I want to be able to move this around a bit for the, from a heat perspective. So I'm going to turn the heat back up um, because with the bigger flame, then we can get heat to more areas. Otherwise there are pockets that are warmer and cooler, which is why like sort of shaking it and shifting it and like scrunching it up like that can help um, move some of the stuff, but really digging the ability that I'll be able to just sort of like lift it and plop it over and it's way more sturdy than a cloth tie. So we'll see. Hopefully they don't melt. <laughs> that would be bad. But if it does, I do have some backup yarn bases for this um, Hanukkah special. Let's start, let's start with the yellow. I'm shaking it up because there was some of that like very, very fun sediment um, in there. And hold on to the little cap, but I'm going to do some lines. Well, that looks cool. I'm curious how much this will spread out. Um, again, I haven't dyed this fiber type before. So I could leave this wait a bit and then go on to the next color. I'm also curious how deeply this might penetrate. Uh, I have no idea if it's just gonna be like on the surface or if it'll go down a few layers. Let's sort of like go into this again. Whoops, I kind of like doubled back. I mean, that pattern. Ooh, it looks like the Wellesley W. All right, that's fun. That is really fun. But I, I do want to kind of go over the first lines that I did, and then these second ones. To give a bit more color. All right, and that used, I've now used up over half of the yellow and I'll still need to flip it over. No idea how quickly this is striking. Um, but let's see if I touch it, it sort of like spreads a bit. So I don't think it's like instantaneous. I like want to add more color, but I'm also nervous at the same time. So Yeet! All right, let's let's go for it. Let's go for it. I don't care if things meld. I don't care if we even go brown. Um, I like brown, and especially because we are going to be over dyeing this anyway. That's pretty. I am. I'm just slowly waiting how much things will feel like layered on top of one another versus like mixed together. Um, I am enjoying this effect so far. Oh, there's another. I guess I didn't shoot the the paper across the whole room. Um, 
I used way more of the yellow than I have of the blue so far. Um, I think that maybe because like in general the yellow felt paler at first. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm sort of enjoying just letting this spread. I'm going to up the heat briefly um, just to get a tiny bit more steam. But I'm really, really digging this. Um, I think that this is going to look really, really cool. Um, the one concern I have shaking is that we could end up with like all green. I have a little spoon so we can see. There's definitely, definitely some yellow right there. And the blue, there's a little bit of blue, but I think more of the blues have struck than the yellows. Um, yeah, and the blue lines look a lot sharper than the corresponding yellow ones. I'm going to reduce the heat again. Um, I'm approaching being ready to try a little bit of red. Oof, I'm nervous. Um, Alright, let's go slow. A little too slow, maybe. There we go. This is really, really pretty. Really, really, really pretty. I, this is another case where, oh, and I used, I think I used the least amount of red from all of the colors combined. Um, I would say I've used almost all the yellow, um, a bit of the blue, and even less of the red. But I do want to leave this now for a little bit to see if the colors are going to spread out or if they're going to stick around. Um, oh, but I have to say, all I want to do right now is like take a picture of this. Well, I'm going to take a picture of it. I want to take a picture of it and post it. I want to post it on Instagram, but I'm not going to because that would be a big, big, big spoiler, right? So, oh, I think that this is gorgeous. I am beyond excited and I'm even more excited, I think, to glaze this. I mean, I think this is gorgeous, gorgeous in its own right. And I just think it's going to be really cool. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting nervous about my black plan, but I still think it'll be cool. I do not want to lose too much liquid. And I also want to prep in some of this heat. So I'm now taking some foil and just laying it sort of across the top. There's still some holes where heat can escape but this should stay, help keep some of the heat and steam in to help those colors set. Um, but again, I hope that I've had enough vinegar for this base. Um, yeah, we'll come back in 10 minutes and see how it's doing. All right, it's been 10 minutes. <gasps> Whoa! This is so, so cool. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys are like blown out. Um, but I just, this is gorgeous. There's rainbow colors without being a complete rainbow. And I'm in love. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, there might be a hint of yellow left there. But it looks like things pretty much have all bound. Is it just, yeah, maybe just that little hint of yellow. But I'm okay with that. Now let's take a look. Most of the color has in fact bound. Let's take a look and see how deeply we think that these colors went. And so the blues, okay, they went down a couple layers. 
Um, definitely not down to the bottom. Um, the reds and yellows, I think, went further than these blues. But let's flip it. Um, and I can pick up now, aha, uh -huh, I can pick up all three at the same time. Um, and up, oh, there is some, a little bit of red left over. Oh dear. <laughs> um, but I'm going for it. Okay. Um, there we go. All right, I need my tongs. Okay, so we are flipped over to the other side. So this one that was near the edge, is it legit flipped? Yeah, I guess we are legit flipped. So the reds gave some pretty good color penetration. Um, the, and the yellows, it's mainly the blues that I think need to be focused on from this other side. I'm really, really curious um, how this will go down overall. But let's start with the blue, because that's the one that we clearly need the most. Yeah, and I guess I need to be careful on the edge. I tend to squeeze more at the edge than I do like in the middle. And so that's also something to take into account. But I am sort of going up, oh, going over some of these spots the second time. Okay. Oh, and I guess, all right, I should go over this one. I've used up all the blue. And guess what? I have no more blue. <laughs> I am out, unless I am going to go and mix some fresh. But I am going to go ahead and add a little more yellow and a little more red. The red is absolutely more pink. Um, it is definitely, definitely a lot more pink in here. Um, and I think that one of the reasons for that is that um, it is more dilute. I think if it was more concentrated, we would get more of that pure red feeling. But I am really, really digging this. Um, really, really digging this. I think that this is fun. It's variegated. And layering black on top of all this, I hope some of these tones still show through. Um, and that that glazing <laughs> will go well. But let's go ahead. I added a little bit of yellow. Now a little bit down there. And all right. This was pretty fun and painterly. Um, I am completely digging this technique. I love just being able to throw the colors on. But now I am going to cover her up. I might pump up the heat a little bit, but I'm gonna cover this up and we'll come back in 10 minutes. In this pot, I have 20 cups of water and I am gonna add one cup of vinegar to it. Um, so it has a high acid concentration. I am also going to add one cup. If I've got it. Ooh, and I've barely got it. Of my 1% stock solution of the Jacquard Jet Black. It's actually like a couple drops left. I'm going to go ahead and add that as well. All right. This is so cool. Um, after these 10 minutes, I am going to turn off the heat and let this sit. I'm still waiting for the glazing pot to finish getting set up, but as soon as that's ready, I'm gonna take things straight out of here and put them in there. I'm a little nervous here, but we're gonna go straight from this pan to this pan for about, I don't know, 10 seconds or something, so. I am going to pick this up. Oof, there's a little bit of red left, but that's okay, that's good. Let's 
I don't want to burn myself, so maybe I should use the tongs to help me. <laughs> I haven't thought this through completely. All right, so I've got the tongs, I've got the yarn, and whew, one, two, three, go. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now I'm going to take this out and put it, and this is the part over here. Oh dear, too long, too long. Okay, pull it up. Okay, this is hot. And into the pan. I might have overdone it. I might have overdone it. Um, I'm not sure. All right, let me move things around so I can show you. Okay, you can definitely see some of the original colors through. I've got one little bit of a white spot right here, which I'm gonna quickly just dip into the pot again because I think that I'd like a tiny bit more coverage right there. Just quickly dipped that. All right. Um, but I'm feeling like, yeah, I guess right here too, sort of like sort of in the middle section. But this one's a bit darker and moodier, so that one doesn't bother me as much as the other one that just felt a little bit white. Um, I do feel like, um, and I'm pretty happy with this one too, I do feel like this looks a little bit like a burnt candle now. Um, I think that, there we go, that's a little closer. It feels a little bit brown, but there's, pops of these colors coming through. So I am fairly excited about that. Um, these tags worked pretty well too. I'm very curious if the final color is gonna feel a little brownish like this, or if it's gonna go a bit, feel a little cooler toned black. Um, I have heard some people say that this jet black is sort of a brownish color. And potentially, if left in longer, for more stuff to absorb, that would give the bit of a cooler tone. But, I think that the yarn was cool before. Some of you might be horrified by what I did. But, I do, and especially with the steam coming off it right now, feel like I achieved this just blown out colorway that has a lot of different hues to it. So, I'm excited. But now, I've got to let this cool so then we can wash it and hopefully nothing is felted. I did not have anything else ready to glaze, but I've got some 100% super wash merino yarn here to just plop in and get, maybe we'll get a tonal gray, maybe we'll get something almost black. Let's plop it in and we get this uneven coverage part because there's so much acids because things strike quickly, but also this yarn was dry when I put it in. But oof, look already. So I'm wondering, maybe there's just some browns that start to strike pretty quickly um, early on and the cooler tones come after. Or it's the yellow shining through. There was a lot of yellow and red. And so the way that that yellow is shining through and the reds, it's making it feel brown. But I'm liking that whole burnt candle vibe. <laughs> so anyway, this, um, oof, oof, ow. It's a beautiful tonal charcoal gray so far. Um, I'm gonna leave this in the pot. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low and I'll check on it in 10 minutes to see if the color has cleared. Most of the color, has absorbed to the yarn. There's like a hint of a steel gray color left to it. But I'm gonna turn off the heat and let this cool in the pot. And then here's a look at our moody, burnt out candle yarn. It's still cooling off. Let's wash our glazed, burnt out candle, moment of darkness yarn. All right, I see a little bit of bleeding here. Now, whether this is coming off of the yarn or off of my now colorful zip tie, I do not know. 
the stage, I am going to remove the zip tie just in case. You might notice that I only have one skein in here right now. I figured I would do wash them one at a time to let there be um, a little more space in the um, in the rinse bath. Uh, but I'm really happy with this. I know that some of you might guess. <laughs> guess when I went and dipped my bright and cheerful yarn into the black and it came out looking like this. And I promise I will try to do something like that and not glaze it sometime in the future. However, I am really, really excited about this. I am excited because this evokes the, the room getting really dark and only being able to see the shadows and the hints and yes. It's what I was going for. Uh, maybe, I think maybe if you wanted a color that felt a little less brown, um, you could try a different kind of black. Another option, and I just used some clear dish soap. Another option would be to glaze with a navy. Um, because, you know, by definition, the navy is bluer than the black, I think that with the reds and yellows added in, it'll have less of a brown feel. Um, but, yeah, I'd say that this yarn feels super soft, and yeah, that water is looking pretty clear. So, I'm going to go ahead, I'll probably do one more rinse um, on this one, and then I'm going to hang this one up to dry, wash the other two skeins. But, I'll come back if I see anything noticeable. And here is the tonal charcoal gray yarn. Let's see if there's any, no bleeding. So just like the others, I'm gonna wash this with a little bit of soap um, and then hang it up to dry. I think that this one does not really have any brown undertones that I see. And so maybe that's the part of the color that down first. But anyway, I'm gonna rinse this until the, well, until all the soap is out now. And I'll come back with all of the finished dried yarn. Here is the finished dried yarn. With this colorway, I wanted to sort of capture a moment, capture the feeling and that moment when the very last candle burns out and that little bit of light is gone. Sometimes you can still see like the smoke and hints of color, but you are looking at the brightness and then all of a sudden things are a little bit of a blur. Um, I first dyed it with using bright primary colors of red, which looked a little more pink, blue and yellow. And the pattern that we got on the yarn before over dyeing it was really beautiful and something that I absolutely want to repeat again. And then I went to do sort of a glazing technique with black. But I will say that this yarn doesn't really feel glazed. It's over dyed, but um, it doesn't, you don't really have that feeling of the light application of another color on top, if that makes sense. Um, sometimes when you glaze a yarn, a yarn that I would call glazed, it almost feels like the dye doesn't penetrate all the way into the plies and on one strand it might be a little uneven. This is definitely over dyed um, and absolutely beautiful. I think it evokes that moment I was going for. It actually almost feels a little bit like a burnt candle because it has a much browner tinge than I had intended. <laughs> I'm not sure if the Jacquard Jet Black broke and sort of gave us this brown, or if all of the yellow and reds underneath it made this lean a little more brown than black. But either way, I think it is really, really moody and beautiful. The yarn, the Superwash Merino yarn that I tossed in to um, sort of soak up all of that leftover black feels more glazed. If you look at sort of like the side here, you can see that the coverage isn't necessarily 
completely even. And if I unfurl it, it almost looks like, you know, there's some, um, that it was brushed on in some areas. This is a lovely, let me open it up, a lovely tonal, tonal yarn. Um, and definitely is gray, um, sort of like a charcoal color versus black. The yarn bases that we over dyed were 85% merino, 15% cashmere, non-superwash. This one is 100% superwash merino. I am honestly unsure how cashmere as a fiber absorbs color compared to wool. I do know that wool silk blends and wool alpaca blends absorb color slower than their 100% wool counterparts. But either way, I'm very excited that we got so much, so many tones and hues on our Capra base. Um, even though like I find that this extra yarn to be really exciting in its own right. This might not have been the exact colorway I was hoping to create. I think it's a little warmer and a little browner than what I was going for. However, it still fits that moment for me of the last, the moment that the last Hanukkah candle on the menorah burns out. And I'm really happy that I went for it. I know many of you like, like gasped as I dropped those beautiful bright colors into the vat of black, but I'm really, really glad I went for it because we see a lot of these primaries showing through still. And I think that what we got, it's different, but it's still very, very beautiful. And this is something that I really do want to play around with more in the future. And I think that you never really know how something might work on a different type of yarn base until you try. In general, I think if you want a real glazed feel, you're gonna want to use a superwash yarn and you're going to, um, I think a yarn with a higher twist sort of shows up that effect a little better. Yarns that have a little bit of a looser twist, I think the dye has an easier time penetrating the fibers a bit deeper, so you don't get sort of that glazy feel where it feels like the color just really shallowly, shallowly settled on the yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, tune in tomorrow night for another Hanukkah special. Um, the new episode will come out after sunset, Eastern time. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and to give the video a like. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week, in addition to sometimes having special celebration weeks like this one. If you love the colorways that I create in these videos, you can actually bring some of it home. In the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store, I have dozens of skeins of yarn that have been dyed in past and upcoming uh, Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos. So you can watch me create the yarn and then bring it home and help it turn into something absolutely beautiful. You can find a link to my shop in the video description and iCard. Thank you so much for watching.